All right, if we could come to order, a uh, special session of uh, Rochester uh, City Council, May the 17th, uh, is open, and we'll start off with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we have a... Uh, what is the actual number of this one? Special... Uh, Zero three? Special session tonight uh, to review and act on uh, ordinance number 03-2016, amendment to the building code for workmanship for the downtown historical corridor. Uh, I'd like to start out by uh, asking for a motion to have the first reading of the uh, ordinance. Make a motion that we read ordinance number 3-2016 by title only. Second. Those in favor? Those opposed? Which one are you reading? Yeah, which one are you reading? They're both the same right now. You want to read that title? Yeah, Ordin yeah title first. Okay. Oh, All right. Ordinance number 3-2016, an ordinance amending portions of the building code concerning workmanship. Okay. This is the official. Any... Uh, any discussion? Let's open it up for discussion. Yeah. So, uh, you want to have the second reading in its okay. entirety? Which one? Well, That's the thing. I, just, I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like we need to have a discussion before we have another reading. Okay, yeah. Since yeah. there are mo more than one version, we open it up for discussion. My yeah. discussion on the versions is... There's only one of them which only includes historical district where you can get the extra grants and that should be the one we do use. Anything outside we can't, we shouldn't include it if they can't get the grant money. But Mason, I think just the main street is the, is the idea that we're looking Fourth for. Fourth to ninth, historical district. Yes. It closes at fourth, not third. Fourth. Fourth. Third's outside of historical district so they can't get grant money. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. That makes wholeheartedly. Yep. sense. Also, opening it up any uh, any farther than that uh, is not what the original intent of the designation of the corridor was all about either. Is my my opinion of it. So, based on that, Mason, the same would hold true for Madison. Because it, it in for two blocks, then it goes to center center line Madison Street. But on the Jefferson side, it stops at the alley. Mm -hmm. You guys agree? I know we read something Is last that, week that said center line to center line. I think that was the tax, that was tax abatement. Tax abatement. Tax abatement. Yeah. 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 Are those included in the corridor or the historical downtown definition? Based on what was emailed to us, whatever day that was, I don't know. Uh, that's where the line is drawn for the historical district. Like it does not include the telephone company building. But our block of between Maine and Madison and the next block over goes to the center line of Madison Street, not an alleyway. So our our building is in the historical district. Yeah. Yeah, I would think I would think we'd want to mirror that. If mm -hmm. if this were to happen, it should mirror it it needs to mirror yeah. the yes. places that can be. I think those money. were included because there are buildings along that 8th Street corridor that are <coughs> considered historic. And there's nothing on the west side of Maine. 
once you get past Main Street. For I guess once you get past that center line of the alley. alley. Of the alley, yeah. yes. Okay. <clears throat> and that's we're all we're talking about your areas of visibility down downtown. Your main street historical area. I think we should have a reading of the whole thing before doing it. Yeah, I think we need to read it so they know exactly what. That makes sense. Okay. We have a motion. Motion to read ordinance 03 2016 in its entirety. Second. Those in favor? Okay. Sir, would you do the duty? <clears throat> Ordinance number 3-2016, an ordinance amending portions of the building code concerning workmanship. I'm take this other one. <clears throat> Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that certain portions of the city's building regulations should be amended to regulate the aesthetic value of property within the historic downtown commercial corridor. Whereas the Common Council acknowledges statistics provide, proving a direct correlation between aesthetics and the economic vitality of a city. Whereas the Common Council supports the initiatives of organizations within the City of Rochester focused on the revitalization of the downtown historic commercial corridor. Whereas the Common Council recognizes the importance of the legislative body extending support to positive initiatives within the city. Now therefore be it ordained by the Common Council of City of Rochester that the ordinance of City of Rochester are hereby amended as follows. 150.024 Workmanship and Demolition. demolition. A. All work on the construction, alteration, and repair of buildings and other structures shall be performed in a good and workmanlike manner according to accepted standards and practices in the trade. B. The regulations set forth in this paragraph and its subparagraphs apply to the following geographic locations. Corridor. The section of Main Street that extends north and south from 4th Street to 9th Street, encompassing the area east and west of Main Street, ending at the north-south alley, lying mid-block between Main and Madison as well as Main and Jefferson, all extending from 4th Street to 9th Street, also including the entire block situated between 7th and 8th Street between Madison Street and Main Street, as well as the entire courthouse square. One, brick and or ornamental decorative masonry material will be used for all new exterior wall reconstruction and construction for any building or structure visible from any alley or street. <clears throat> All materials must be conducive to the historical intent of the corridor as defined by the City of Rochester Common Council. No other construction material is allowed. Two, historically ornamental elements including awnings, cornices, column, mullion, parapet, pediment, window hood, etc. may be repaired and replaced by using the original construction material or a material with the historically similar texture, color, appearance, and style in order to maintain historical compatibility within the corridor. Three, historic buildings, structures, and sites shall be maintained to meet the applicable requirements established under City of Rochester in Indiana State Statute for buildings generally so as to prevent the loss of historic material and the deterioration of important character-defining details and features. Four, nothing in this section shall be construed as to prevent the ordinary repairs and maintenance of any building, structure, or site, provided that such repairs or maintenance do not result in a conspicuous change in the design, form, proportion, mass, configuration, building material, texture, color, location, or external visual appearance of any structure or part thereof. Five, any pitched roof visible from a street or alley will be constructed from roofing material consisting of one color and will be neutral in shade. All materials and colors must be conducive to the historical intent of the corridor as defined by the Rochester Common Council. Six, any property owner or other interested party desiring changes in the exterior appearance of buildings or structures within the corridor subject to view from a public way by additions, reconstruction, alteration, and or maintenance including the involvement of exterior color change shall apply for a City of Rochester building permit prior to making such changes. Said building permit application may require sketches, drawings, photographs, descriptions, or other information to be submitted to the Office of the Building Commissioner. If an applicant is denied a permit or believes that one of these guidelines is unduly restrictive, not in keeping with the histori historicity of the applicant's building, or otherwise should not be required for the applicant's project, the applicant may request that the Rochester Common Council grant the applicant a variance from the particular guideline. C. 
All demolition debris rubbish shall be completely removed and disposed of in a legal and proper manner within 14 days of the start of the demolition process. Where a demolition permit is required, all demolition sites will have some type of barrier to signify to the public that a hazard exists, rope, tape, fencing, etc., which will completely enclose surround the work site. Where a demolition permit is required, any demolition site open for more than five days must have construction barricades as defined by the Indiana Department of Homeland Security and not to be less than six feet in height. All demolition sites will be completely backfilled with suitable material graded and seated with a vegetative cover within 30 days of the start of demolition. Any building demolished in a commercial industrial district will be completed by a contractor that is legally bonded and insured. D. If any person, firm, or corporation shall violate any of the provisions of this subsection, do any act prohibited herein or fail to perform any duty lawfully enjoined within the time prescribed by the building commissioner, or shall fail, neglect or refuse to obey in any lawful order given by the building commissioner in connection with the provisions of this code for each such violation, failure, or refusal, such per person, <coughs> firm, or corporation shall be fined $250. Each day of such unlawful activity shall constitute a separate offense. Any comments from the council? Okay, I'd like to open it up for comments from the floor. I would ask uh, you stand to make a comment. Please identify yourself for the record, please. My name is Steve Kraft. I'm interested in person of building downtown. Your ordinance would be hindering me to help the community have a better place instead of another closed down building. I think you really should look at the situation base by base or maybe give a little bit more leeway. I came in this town with 86 cents to my name, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to stay here the rest of my life and have my grandkids come here. And what you're telling me today is I probably can't afford this building that I'm looking at because of the condition. Appreciate your time. Anyone else like to speak? Ruth? Yeah, Ruth Gunter. I, uh, we just redid the Evergreen and we looked into the historic uh, redoing of the Evergreen. And I actually had an architect tell me that people that historically maintain their places the proper way and to actually get the money, the grant money that's there, um, generally it's a tax write-off. Don't even bother. It is not worth your time because unless you have that much money to do it all the right way, no money will be given to you. And I was uh, emailed a, I don't know, 80-some page thing from the historic guy down in Indy of different examples as to what is paid for, what is not paid for. There was somebody that redid absolutely everything to their building. And in one office area above the exit door, they did not repair the um, the broken plaster. They got no money from the historic place because they did not finish the project 100%. So it's all fine and dandy, but when you're looking at an extra $30,000 to do the windows the proper way, um, mm -hmm. Are you guys going to help us get that money and find that money and do it in a timely manner so that you can open your business or continue with your business? I mean, I did research it, and like I said, the architect told me it's not worth a person's time or energy unless they're just looking at a way to throw your money away. So well, that's play, something to take in consideration. Let me play devil's advocate, Ruth. What if someone came into town and right across the street from you, they build a Quonset hut, like we used to bivouac in in the Army back in the days or whatever, and started some kind of a store? Would that upset you with your business uptown? Well, 
is it what their business is doing? Um, I, I got to tell you, you know, I had mixed reviews when they put that nice red, white, and blue um, roof on there, and we were upstairs uh, gutting the upstairs of the building. So it was very obvious to us, oh my God, the red, white, and blue, it looks like a freaking circus. Um, but after they got it done, I mean, I'm talking as soon as they got it done, I did have to admit that, you know what, it goes in very nice with the um, gas station that's right beside it. The average person probably won't notice it, and the only reason we noticed it is because it was a change. Um, but it is who they are, and in all reality, who am I to sit there and tell them that they didn't have the right to do that when they wanted to make a stand? Um, and it doesn't look bad, you know, I, and, and it is who they are, so I can't condemn that as, as a person. Uh, and if that business across the street is bringing in business, then am I too upset that I've got a few more people eating in my restaurant because of that? My point, my point being, the only thing, can, correct me if I'm wrong, Casey, the only thing we have ordinance-wise that controls what is built downtown is structure, structurally, right? Fire, yeah, the fire lines. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty wide open. And that, I don't know if that's something of consideration for building owners, too. I know it is for couple who aren't here tonight that if they put the monies in to do something they don't want that Quonset hut right next to their building uh, right now like I say we have no way of preventing that personally I'm not one to normally say <clears throat> I'm for telling an owner someone what they what guidelines there are um, but looking at the downtown Revi revitalization plans and the potential we have to really help bring more people to your buildings, whether you own the business that's there, whether you lease it to another business where they'll be more profitable. You know, I, I think we have a great opportunity to do this and a lot of excitement behind it. This room was five times as full as this for that meeting. Everyone, I was nervous because I thought there'd be a lot of back and forth. Everyone is for it. Um, and what I'm afraid of is if we spend taxpayer money to help bring more business to your buildings and some may go a different way and hurt the overall success of this program. I mean, if everyone's completely against the ordinance and everything, that, that's, that's, that's great. We won't do it. In my mind, we won't do it. But we're given a great opportunity to spend other, you know, spend taxpayers money to help the downtown district. The buildings you own. And actually, this ordinance wasn't just concocted here. It was uh, predicated uh, on uh, a couple other ordinances from other communities. One was North Manchester, and the other one was Wabash. Uh, and I can say this, Ruth, I completely understand where you're coming from, and I can see both sides. Where we actually just had uh, Sarah and I had the. Um, honor of actually going to Wabash today and oddly enough as we were um, having a discussion about rural housing is why we were there to, to discuss that um, the, the gentleman that was doing planning um, he was now with the state he was actually there and because I knew I was preparing for this and trying to weigh both sides and what my brain actually wanted to uh, to decide what to, to believe and I asked him you know if he had had any issues when they did the uh, forward uh, progress with Wabash and he had stated you know what Amy it was pretty rough at first because of some of the similar things that folks are speaking about at the moment um, and a lot of those similar arguments were brought to the table um, but and Sarah can vouch for this he said that um, though it was a rough start and a bit of a rocky journey it really did turn out like Mason was speaking about it did turn out to ultimately produce value it was a like I said a rough kind of start and a bit of a rocky journey, but once they work the details out, they actually produce more value. And if we, you know, understand correctly, Wabash has not only received the stellar designation, which is a lot more money for the downtown, but also just the national resignation or uh, 
the certification that they received. So they've got two things that we haven't even touched. So my thought process has to be, if we make some of, if these gentlemen up here make some of those difficult decisions, which I go back and forth on because I don't want building owners or business owners to suffer, but I can see the long range success and actually sat with someone today who actually told me that it was successful. So, I mean, it's gonna be difficult and it's hard, but if we don't make hard decisions, how do we move forward, you know? And correct me if I'm wrong here, if you would have brought your, your building looks great. You guys did a wonderful job. If you brought us those plans, just because it wasn't entirely historical renovation, that doesn't mean we would have said no. Oh, that's absolutely I, uh, right. Your building would have been approved, in my mind. At the time, nobody told me I can go to the city and get anything. It was go to the state, and the state yeah. will tell well, me. Well, I, I, I guess... I, I just don't want you thinking yeah. that because your windows aren't, you know, the historical renovation, that it wouldn't have been approved. I, yeah, I guess you know, this kind of... There might be... Everyone in here might be coming from a different perspective. Um, really, where the city's at now... We have no, I guess, controls in place for how the downtown aesthetics look. And right now, if someone wanted to come in and put in, you know, a rainbow row looking house that you see in South Carolina, bright pink, you know, doesn't fit into the overall look of the downtown, we have nothing in place currently that we could stop anybody from doing it. And, you know, I, my goal, I guess, with this ordinance isn't to set up a grant program where it's to the nail, to the paint color, set you up for a historical grant. That's not, I guess, my, my intent behind any of this. And I, I don't have a dog in the fight. You know, I don't own a building downtown. I just live here, you know, and I guess my role is to, to care about the, the current business owners, but also <laughs> to protect the long-term look of this town 50, 75 years down the road. And, you know, to me, I'd like to find a happy medium where we can control the aesthetics or at least not have something, an albatross, come in that could neg negatively impact all the downtown businesses. Or set up a trend where every, bu where every building looks different. Um, if we truly want to continue with, quote unquote, a historical downtown. But, you know, I, I, it's good that we have everyone here. You know, I, I want to hear everyone's opinion, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, you know, because that's what we need is input from the business owners. Um, Mr. Kraft, um, I, you know. I just got a quick question. Yeah. Because have the city council inspected any of our downtown buildings? Not interior, no. Because Exterior. Have ex you actually physically looked at some of these buildings? Because I've worked on a couple yeah. of them. And if it wasn't for the homeowners or the business owner to do what they did, you would have had another building down on the ground. Absolutely. You would have had a disaster. I worked on a place that people called it a drug house. It's a beautiful place. I get compliments on this particular building every day, mm -hmm. and it's been there for a while. And I'm just asking the council to really look at not a homeowner association. I know you'd want control to bring in more businesses because I want to grow here. Mm -hmm. This is the place I want to live and die, and I'm an Arizona boy. So I take a lot of pride in this town. I applaud what the city's done. I applaud uh, Mayor Denton on the great work that we had problems with the sidewalk in town and things are going the right way. I'm just asking you guys really look at some of the things that like myself, trying to better myself in this town, trying to put a business, put some more taxpayer dollars in there. Kind of look at yeah. what I'm seeing as well. Thank you. Okay. I've got a question then with this. Basically, if I understand this right, it's also the building on 9th Street from the fire. Uh, the big deal is is that if that person doesn't have enough money to do any more than just put siding up, uh, metal siding. And in order to keep it historic, brick is, is the solution. So if this got passed, then he would have to put brick up but he really doesn't have that extra five thousand dollars. So then, what would this help for him to get that extra five thousand dollars to put the brick up? I mean, point to, blank. Because to the best of my knowledge, I, I I don't know what his financial situation is. 
And that I know of. I, yeah. I don't know. Would you want to spend an extra five thousand dollars just to study your building if it's good enough? You know, um, and would you want to be forced? For me? To, yeah. Would you want that? Yes. You would. I mean, you I, want to be forced to spend that extra five thousand dollars? Well, you I, have I prefer not? you. You not put words in my mouth. I, mean, I, I wouldn't consider much. it forced. I would consider it my duty as a downtown business owner. You know, I'm not forced to do certain repairs to my house, but I invest in that property to make it aesthetically nice for, you know, not only me and safe, but also to fit in with my neighborhood. You know, I, if, if it's downtown, you know, I, I would put up brick. If that's, if the building itself is brick, if it's a, a brick building, I would want to put brick in personally the kitchen to my restaurant some people say it looks like uh, it looks pretty bad um, we should have probably tore it down but we put a bunch of uh, extra cement and everything in it and kind of cobbled it but it's sturdier than it's ever been in probably 30 or 40 years personally I like the back of the building and there's been a lot of people that say it's a great place to take pictures um, it has <laughs> Well, I like the back. So, I like what you've done with that building. Well, the back yeah. of it, you know, but at the same time, there's still that conversation as to what in the world are we going to cover that with? And no matter what, there is no answer that makes it look good <coughs> or aesthetic to any building downtown. Um, you know, so so it's it's not just about you know what what you can do. I, I don't think anybody puts anything up, do they? Just to be gaudy and ugly. I mean, they, they, anybody that owns anything has to take into consideration what they can afford. What I'm asking is, it'd be nice to be able to afford it, but if I can't, then is there a solution? Or is it just up to me to be able to afford it? You know, whereas five years ago, when I, you know, if I bought a building five years ago and this was my concept five years ago, all of a sudden now that I'm ready to do it and I didn't have knowledge of this right here, mm -hmm. and then I'm knocked down and now I've got to come up with an extra $10,000 I didn't know about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah well, I, mean, I think that's, with, with so, the, I mean, you don't get. Like, if you went to Casey's office, she would probably deny. If this were passed, she would deny your plans, but then you'd have a chance to come. And I would think, you know, if it happens five years down the road, whoever's on the council at that time would probably want to work with that downtown business owner. You know, the last thing we want to do is put someone out. But, you know, do you understand also where we're coming from on this? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I mean, do, it, it, we're, we're in a delicate situation because now we have no standards. Do you right. think do you th think we should have some standards? Yeah. What, what do you think those should be? I don't know. Gary? There are two. Gary, uh, would you identify yourself? A couple of yeah, Harry Webb. What a couple options too for the Rochester Downtown Partnership has just recently put out a facade program. You know, we are offering five thousand dollar grants. Certainly in the corner of Ninth and Main would probably qualify for a facade enhancement grant if it, if it applies. So there's that money. There's also Fedco loan money for people who can't afford it. There's a loan committee that you know can can loan out money for things like this for improving infrastructure. So there are some resources that we have that we can offer building owners if they're especially if they're being using it to follow the guidelines that are required to maintain a business in the downtown. Yes, you're right. There are some programs. Be Sarah. Um, identify yourself please. Sarah Reese I am the president of the Rochester downtown partnership which is our Indiana Main Street uh, program here in Rochester and as the president I've been asked by our board of directors to speak in support of this proposed ordinance for downtown Rochester uh, we are an alliance of community members focused on creating a positive atmosphere for the city of Rochester to stimulate economic development enhance the quality of life promote a center of activity, and support the preservation of downtown Rochester. As such, we feel this ordinance is vital to continuing to move Rochester forward in a cohesive direction. The RDP recently rolled out our facade grant program, as Harry mentioned, to business and building owners within our focus area, which very closely mirrors the area that is being discussed here, um, <clears throat> to provide funds for the renovation and restoration of fa facades in downtown. Part of this program includes design guidelines that maintain the historical integrity of our downtown district. 
We find it of utmost importance that the business and building owners who are taking advantage of this program have the security of knowing their neighboring businesses will be held to the same design standards. This ordinance is a crucial first step in providing that knowledge. The Rochester Downtown Partnership strongly encourages the Rochester City Council to adopt this new ordinance in order to preserve the historic nature of our downtown. Um, in addition to that, as you mentioned, a lot of times those federal funds that are spoken of that are available for historic districts are really hard to get. Um, there's a huge pool of people who are going after those funds. There are some very strict guidelines to obtain those funds, but on a local level, the downtown partnership, once we have our 501c3 status, has some ability for grant monies to us that would be then given back to our community. Um, and so those local fund opportunities, even the facade grant program, which is currently available, um, are opportunities that we feel business and building owners in the community can more readily obtain. But in order to offer that, we want to ensure that we're moving Rochester in that cohesive direction, in the, in the same direction, so that we're not having, you know, a fluorescent pink polka dotted building. I mean, it sounds far fetched and it sounds ridiculous, but you never know. You never know what somebody's going to try to do. And we have um, a downtown that does have that historic designation. And as a group, we want to maintain that. I'm just curious the crowd tonight and uh, how many building owners do we have here do we have in in the historic region yeah in the historic region yeah, hands up okay i think that gentleman had a yeah. question okay. yeah jeff johnson um i actually had the quantum hut that you're referring to um that building on fifth and main the old uh i think it's previous building one time but we redid that, Steve and I did, two or three years ago. And I uh, kind of go along with what Rue said. I mean, to bring that back to historical um, quality, it, there's no way it would be cost efficient. I mean, that building was literally falling down. I mean, the bricks, we had three layers of bricks, and you could just, they, they crumble in your hands. So to try to repair the, if, if it came down to the point where I had to repair the bricks, I probably wouldn't have took that project on because it's, uh, you know, we spent, I think, we concentrated mainly on the electric, plumbing, you know, the infrastructure, the roof, foundation. And then to get to the point where you're dealing with these, uh, you know, the, the exterior that's just crumbling, um, that our only really, you know, practical solution was to put the metal up because that metal's pretty much holding that building together. I, I mean, I think without the metal, you know, it, uh, you know, we could have repaired it. It would have cost thousands and thousands. And then I really don't think it would uh, look right. <laughs> so that, the new brick mixed with the old brick. And uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I know there's got to be a set of guidelines, but I, I think a building like mine, to be as an example, you get one in such poor condition. I mean, I would think that you guys would be a little, you know, lenient with that particular, you know, something in that, you know, such poor condition. Yeah, and you did the building right across from Beacon, correct? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. they did a marvelous job on that. that building. Would be and cool. I had a bird's eye view to that building for because my office at the at the time at the credit union faced that building for five years. Oh, okay. Years. So yeah, I had a every day, you know. Oh, you see the mess, and you and see I, what came out inside. Oh, of the absolutely. Building. <laughs> it was yeah, awful. yeah, and I what mean, you guys have done to that building looks great. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you guys have done an amazing job with that structure. And I know it don't fall within historical. Yeah. What you guys are looking for, but when you know to be cost efficient. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, you you were right. At that building at that point was either <coughs> demolish it. Right. I mean, I think the city even had to board the windows up at one point before it was yeah. bought. And I think it was ready to be condemned. Yeah, it was sure. close. It, it was on our radar at that point. Right. Um, you know, and I, I think that is something the council would also consider. You know, those type of projects that are, you know, so be case on. by case. Yeah, I mean. Well, it, it, there's not an absolute. That's why the the sections in there about the review of the council. If it doesn't. You know, automatically fit. This is historical. Then it has to come before the council and be 
right. be reviewed. Yeah. I'd have been all in favor if someone wanted to take that project on. Yeah. Because I mean that building I was would at have that too. point. Right. But, where, but now there's no review for anything that Quonset I, I keep referring to could show up any day. And uh, those of you who have invested monies in uh, redoing things could have that as a neighbor and it might not be the best neighbor to have and there's no control in the city to keep that from happening and these other towns we referred to they realized that a lot earlier than we have that you have to have something like that in place another question um, that our other building, uh, Tidewater, it's the, um, the side is a cinder block. So when we go to redo that, being as how it is cinder block, I mean, what, what do we do? Yeah, I was going to put metal up until, you know, all this started. I mean, is that something like the side of the, the front side of the back? This is the, the, uh, the back back. No, the side. Uh, it's the back side facing the alley and uh, 8th well, the, Street. The side's no, no, the side that faces uh, north, Cook, the old Cook building. Yeah, yeah, north facing. So it faces north. It's just a big. Uh, but off cent- the back of the building. Faces north, right? the side of the building. Yes, the side. Oh, because it's on the out. Is it on? It'd be right behind uh, Nikki's right Nikki's right beach. Okay. Yeah. But it's just a big. And it's cracked in several places. <coughs> it needs repaired. And if we try to, you know, stucco or facade or. You know whatever it's gonna you know get, it's gonna crack again you know i'd like to put metal around the whole side but you know since it is center block i mean that's not really historical mm-hmm. i mean something like that i'm the kind of curious yeah those are the things you guys it would be brought yeah that's that's, that would be the discussion then right. for uh a variance or deviation for that situation yeah uh, my opinion and I'm not a council member it's just an opinion I would think the council would be agreeable to work with somebody who were, who was working in that manner to to make something structurally better but also pleasing to the eye if you came forward with something psychedelic or out of this sport that's gonna you know what we're talking somebody drives down main street from out of town uh yeah you want every one of your store owners to be noticed and but you don't want somebody that be noticed <laughs> you know something out of uh doesn't fit doesn't fit in the uh, climate of the downtown i mean everyone being the owners here you all want the same thing you want your building to look good but you want it to be affordable as a council, I think you know we realize that we realize some of the stuff is very expensive. Um, so if we were to pass this, you know, it may seem a little strict, but by doing so, we can be probably a little more lenient when it comes to, you know, if you come to us and say, well, you know, we need like the north side of that building, it's already block. Can we get it metal? You know, we'll we'll look at it and you know if you're trying to make it better, and as long as you're making it look good. I think that's what we really care about. And this is just a set of guidelines to make sure that we're all looking in the same direction. So this isn't an absolute. This isn't saying if it's not brick and you know it's not gonna be passed. That's that's not what we're looking for. It's just a means to get to where we both want to go. I, I think there's an assumption made by this group that anybody who buys a building downtown and wants to do something with it is not only interested in their building they're interested in the whole downtown because now they're joining that group of buildings and that's all we're saying we want to make sure that everybody who is involved with owning property downtown are going to be happy with their neighbors and what's going on in the rest of that area and and uh, this group certainly doesn't want to tell people how to do that but we want to work with them and make sure that everything comes out in that manner and everybody is happy with how the downtown looks that's our that's our face to the world 
we want to make sure we're putting our best face on. Back I'm sorry. And then the gentleman back up corner. here. Gentleman here? To you. Or him and him. So <laughs> either one, whoever wants to go first. Go first. Barry <laughs> Baldwin. Barry. Um, I, I applaud what you're trying to do. I'm all for historic preservation. And I, I love Rochester's downtown. I think it has a lot of potential. It's not quite there yet, but it's, it is a great downtown. And I would not be one who would want to see the pink polka dotted thing come in. So on the one hand, I, I do support what you're trying to do. But on the other side of it, I just have a couple issues and I would just leave out there as questions for thought. Uh, one would be, you know, you guys, I, I would believe your intentions. I think I would trust where you're coming from and what you want to do. I think I understand that. But playing the devil's advocate, let's say 10 years from now, you guys aren't here. We have new people in here. These ordinances are on the books and they are written in stone. And you get people in here that's going to take a literal interpretation of this. That could be a problem. And I say this because I've done business in another city for a long time. And this happens time and time again. You also have situations where you have what I would call personality conflicts between me and you. And, you know, there's problems there. So I guess my, my point would be um, if you come across too restrictive, out of the gate on paper. I mean, you can you can say one thing, and I believe you, but what's on paper is what's law. So if it's too restricted right out of the gate, and I'm a potential business owner, building buyer coming into Rochester, I'm going to look at these things and like, man, if I don't have the money, that could that could put me out of business right away. If I feel that uh, local government and ordinances are too restrictive that might hinder me from coming here. Um, and another thing, and, and I know this is a, a kind of the catch-22 thing, I know you have to have it, but on the other side of it, I just, I see this hurting so many people's this penalty situation, uh, $250 a day. Uh, you know, I guess on the one hand, if, if a person like in my business, if a person doesn't have the money to pay their taxes, how are they going to have money to pay the penalty? So if, if I can't afford to do what needs to be done, my building's falling down, I've got to do something, even if it doesn't comply with uh, ordinances, I'm going to get fined $250 a day for this. And these are all questions. I don't know. I just want to make sure there's a clear understanding between you guys and, and us here on what you're doing. But, uh, in theory, I agree with what you're doing. I, I do. I think there has to be some standards, and you know, that's I'm just saying. Watch, watch your wording on the ordinances. I guess because you may not be there, and someone else can take it down. So Absolutely. Very good. Very good choice. I worry about the individual taste of somebody wanting to come downtown. You know, to uh, to open another business, and I don't know what type of business to say they want to open a hat shop and you know and they they want to do it more of an upbeat uh, modern appeal to the young and then we're going to say you know I don't know you got to stay with these colors and uh, you, know, you got to have the brick on the front we can't do anything you know is that and so that could push as, as the gentleman just said you know that could push somebody right out of town also I have a you know I was just a small business and I've been in all my life and I'd have a real hard time with somebody coming to my building and saying Oh, John, you know, you can't do this. Believe me, they'd had their hands full. Um, I never was really too concerned about what the other buildings in my community were like, what, what they were doing, what they were like, or what color they were, how much glass they had in the front windows, as long as they were nice buildings and the people were, were there. And I was worried about how my building was maintained and what I was doing so I had business uh, you know I can't worry about everybody else making money I want to make some money and uh, I just I would hate to put any limitations on anybody downtown that's the way I kind of feel about it I'd hate to put limitations on somebody that could bring in something totally new that'd be a great idea and then we have a restriction that says you've got to blend in 
I, I think that hurts the individual taste of city. But I think you have to look at, I just keep thinking, what about these other places? A Amy, would you do me a oh, favor and Rebel. identify yourself? Yeah, yeah you didn't I'm the sorry. first time. Amy Rebel, County, Thank you. Um, I just keep thinking about the other places that have done this. You mentioned Wabash. How many of, we haven't actually asked the specific questions of did it prohibit business or did it help? I'm assuming it helped because they have a more thriving downtown business than we do. And I guess I haven't looked to see if there's a hat shop that's out of question that's insane downtown Wabash. But that's what keeps rolling around in my head is some of these questions from business owners maybe being able to ask some of the other places that have done this and have actually been successful so we're not the first one we're not the pioneer folks who have pioneered this idea so it's been successful in other places um, I would assume there's something that would produce success from it from a cohesive plan and a GPS coordinates that you can direct folks to but with some leniency like Mark was speaking about you're not from what I understand, you're not stating that if there's a specific circumstance that's prohibitory that they can't come to y'all. Yeah. But, you know, I, what, what we don't want is to be so restrictive that no one wants to do anything with the building. Yeah. You know, the last thing we want to do is have crumbling buildings downtown. And, and really, a lot of these buildings, like Mr. Johnson had said, they're getting to that age. Some of them are 100 years old or older. And, you know, they're at that tipping point where you let them sit and crumble. I mean, the Bailey's building is a, a good example right now. A hole, well, kind of a hole in the back of the building. A layer of bricks is, is missing. You want and, to have a strategy. You want to have some sort of guiding place yeah. is what you're really kind of, from what I understand. Yeah, we want, we want, we don't want to make it so restrictive where business owners can't maintain their property. Well, and I know, think, John, um, one thing that's very important to remember on the Casey, ordinance. identify yourself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <Physicals. laughs> um, one thing to keep in mind is with the ordinance, a lot of it has to do with maintenance. Um, the city does not have any kind of maintenance ordinance right now on its books, which is why I know, Ruth, you had mentioned um, neo Ninth and Main. And yes, that, that's a very obvious concern because Ruth and Ma Ninth and Main is right there. It's kind of like the Allegiance Road. Everybody sees it. You see it when you come into town, you see it when you go out of town. Um, but it's the little buildings that people don't recognize. You know, Steve had asked, has anybody gone and seen the buildings? I have. I've seen them inside, I've seen them outside. You know, you have the old chicken coop, Alejandro's. You have, um, you know, the face coming off the old cobbler's corner. You have the back of the Bailey's building. You have Ninth and Main. You have, you know, multiple different buildings that if you look on the alley side, you know, or you look on the side of it, you can see where that brick is tuck pointing. The front of Rochester Orthopedics. If you go and you look at that, there is tuck pointing that needs to be done of the old Rochester Orthopedic building. And if it doesn't happen, then it's going to look like the chicken coop. And the chicken coop has cracks from the roof all the way to the foundation. And when it starts coming through, you, that's a serious problem. And what the city is going to have to face if there isn't some kind of code that goes on the books for maintenance and for the ability of, you know, the requirement, I'll say, for owners to maintain the building. They need to maintain it. And yes, metal is a very, very, you know, affordable way of fixing it. But I just named how many buildings? Five. So is that? what the city wants or does the city council want to look at them and say okay business owner we'd love to work with you get creative you know get creative with different materials you know you're intelligent people you know you own a business you're profitable in it get creative you know very what they're doing with the b and b building you know from what he's told me is absolutely amazing you know and it will be when they walk into it i mean the very creative people what they're doing on the inside and it may not be the same as what's in your building it may be the hat shop you just never know and if somebody wants to come in and do a hat shop there's nothing that precludes them from putting decorative ornaments on those buildings um, there's nothing that precludes them for signage you know and and awnings it doesn't say anything about the awning i mean they could put up an awning that looks like a top hat if they wanted to. These are, you know, they can get creative with all of that. What this is saying is you have a building, 
you may be making money in this community, but you need to put that money back into the community. And you need to maintain the building so that we don't have missing teeth all over our downtown. Because you had a business and you were making money off of this community, but you didn't want to put the money into the walls. So once you made your money and the building was too bad, you moved down to a different spot. And the city, through the unsafe building code, had to condemn it. And now the taxpayers who live here have to pay to take the building down. That's what I continually see in my position. And that's something, and that's one of the reasons why, just about every year for the last few years, I have come to you and said, this is a serious concern. There's some type of ordinance that I really believe you should put on the books. Harry Webb. I just want to echo the RDP support and, and you know, just the general perception of and congratulate the council for considering this ordinance because you know the aesthetic look of our downtown is you know is, is really nice it could be a lot better and hopefully someday it will be but it's by doing nothing it's going to continue to deteriorate and as a retailer who's rented space in malls and stuff this is nothing you know everybody wants a nice look and feel and that's what we're trying to protect it's, it's a general definition of materials to be used. It's not saying really what you need to do with your building. You go into a, a mall or you go up on Grape Road or any strip mall, you go down here to the Walmart Plaza or the Big Art Plaza, whatever that is, you are ex extremely restricted what you can do with the face of that building. You know, you can do certain signage and, and certain things in your windows, but they are trying to maintain the look and feel of their thing just like we're trying to maintain the look and feel of our downtown. And I appreciate the fact that there's an appeal process. I think we're all trying to go in the same direction, but I don't think we have to overthink it here in that um, we're just trying to define the materials and, and hopefully prevent major blemishes and work with the building owners that have buildings that are in severe disrepair to find a solution that's gonna work. And I, I appreciate your consideration of this ordinance. You still want to still have a comment you want to make in the very back? Okay. I didn't want to skip over you if you did. I have one more comment. Yeah. You guys are talking downtown and I applaud you, but there's a whole community. There's businesses that are not downtown. And if you drive in this town like I did in 2000, I looked at the town. I didn't look at just downtown. I drove up and down the streets. I chose to live here for this long. And you're looking at just downtown. I think if you're going to make an ordinance, you should make it for all businesses and look at all businesses. There are some businesses that should be tore down that's not in downtown. That's a sore eye. I don't think just the downtown. I applaud what you're trying to do. I honestly do. It scares me a little bit because I'm trying to start a business here on a shoestring budget. But I can play if I know the game, but am I gonna go outside of downtown and open my business now? Because it'd be cheaper. But if I had all the eggs in the same basket and looked from an outsider's point of view, I looked at all of Rochester. I looked at the parks. I looked at the schools. I looked at what this community had for me. I applaud Harry Webb Mr. Johnson, we're making beautiful buildings downtown. That's why I like this place. So I think there's some other businesses in town that should fall under this category that Casey Cole's trying to, because I know she's looked at some of these buildings. <laughs> so I think maybe the council should look at not just downtown for this ordinance. Maybe it should be some other, for all businesses, because like Harry Webb said, Crane go over to Peachtree. They have big restrictions. Steve, it's well said. Well said. Appreciate your comments. This is a journey, and uh, we haven't started the first step of the journey. This is a first step process. But you're absolutely right. If your community is going to move forward and progress, you have to consider the whole whole community. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. I'm Linda Baldwin, his wife. 
his wife out. Okay, Linda. I would say sometimes um, people think because you're buying a business or because you're buying a building, you have money. And usually it's those people that need the money the worst because you have everything inside to do and staff to provide for and yada yada yada, lots of all, everything that you see inside and, you know, maybe roofing and, you know, all of that. So I think it would, for me, personally, I think that there's just a, a fine line that you guys, yes, you have to be somewhat judgmental and uh, I'm not sure we can approve this, you know, and maybe critique those people. But also, um, if, you, if you're not careful, I think you will restrict businesses from coming. And, um, and I know that um, commercial business is very hard to buy with banks. So you have to keep that in mind. The odds are against you to get a bank loan for commercial build, building. My husband works with people all the time. We just had someone recently that tried three different banks to get a business it for this county, and they were denied from three different banks. So commercially, it's very hard to get loans. And then if you pass and you get it, then you've got all this work ahead of you to do everything. And um, I think it would be great for you guys just to embrace those people. And what can we do to make your business easier? You know, instead of saying, oh, you've got to have all this to do now too. Because personally, if that's <clears throat> what it was, uh, I can honestly tell you we probably would have moved outside of Rochester, you know, if it was already set in stone. Um, but it would, I think it would just be a little bit discouraging, especially even if you're brand new business. We've been established for a long time, so we kind of know how that can work. But if you're brand new coming in and you don't, you don't realize how much investment there is as a new person, you know, until you get in it, and then you're like, whoa, what did I get into? So that's something, you know, um, kind of walk a mile in a business owner's shoes and see that kind of thing and take all of that in perspective. But I agree there needs to be maybe somewhat of a level common sense approach, but not be so restrictive. And I think some of those <coughs> buildings that have the pink polka dots those come and go. They don't usually stick around. So the ones that stick around are the ones that have more pride in, in their business. And um, I agree with John, sometimes each business needs their own personality in their building too. It makes a statement about their business. So it's, it's a tough decision that you're up against. I, I get that, but just wanted to voice out another side to everything. That's a that's a good point. So good point. I, I should I should make a comment though. But we mentioned Wabash and North Manchester. They have some hat shops with polka dots all over, <laughs> but they're not on the main corridor. Uh, that that makes a difference in their community. So I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. thank you for that story because that's been my life the last three and a half years. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I mean, there is a misconception just because you own a business, people think you have money coming out of your ears. Um, and I am not one to look you in the eye and say, this is what you will do with your building. It's your building. I strongly believe in property rights. This is a first step in a long process. We, we have the infrastructure coming together with the partnership, the community involvement. Um, and at the, at the end of the day, what we're looking at is bringing people in this downtown. If we bring people into this downtown, your businesses will thrive. Because the more traffic, foot traffic we have on those sidewalks, they're gonna be going to the Evergreen. They're gonna be, oh, you know, I need to come and go to Baldwin Accounting, see what they're about. And that's the end goal. We wanna, we wanna make this <clears throat> community vibrant and make these businesses successful. And, you know, Steve, the reason it's pertaining to this area right now is because this is the historic des designation that we have. This is the geographic area. 
So that's why it's pertaining to this ordinance pertaining to this area. Um, as far as other buildings, the the moment they get to a certain level, that's when we can take action. And you know, and we we do we as a city, we don't want to be property owners, but we do have a lot of situations where the building becomes so dis in disrepair that we have to condemn it and you know the county just condemns it and then we put it in our in our asset column we have to tear it down whatever we don't like being in that position but that's why we're just talking about the downtown um so i mean the end goal is to bring everybody up not just you know pull up our belt and say this is what you will do right now in this in this community it's a, it's a it's going to be a long road and we have to have that vision to the future and you know three three and a half short years none of us may be here i mean you guys get to vote in three and a half years so um it will be interpretation but you know we we have a building code in place it's not a very good one so we're amending it so just because it's in the books doesn't mean we can't go back and change it or someone else can't change it i mean they may look at it and what were these guys thinking and then you know got it and change it so in, in my mind the the main intent of this is to build a vibrant downtown with thriving businesses not to you know just hey i don't like the way that looks i want it to look like this but this this is a step and there's been a lot of work behind the scenes in this you know we've been looking at those other communities discussing that with them what they've done and you know they all have some form of of this ordinance dictating what they want to see in their downtown to make it work together i mean everyone here is focused on their individual business i i get that you guys that's where you derive your income that's how you pay your bills um so you know it, we're just trying to look at moving the community forward and you know i would strongly urge you guys to you know step in on one of these downtown partnership meetings i mean you're the lifeblood of the downtown you own all the buildings so you know your involvement is key and you know as i said as a councilman i don't we don't want to shove anyone anything down someone's throat but personally i think this is a, a good first step for us yeah and i, I guess i have a question <clears throat> For like North Manchester and Wabash, the other communities that have this in place, do they have a, I guess if they've been denied a permit, do they have a place to go? Where, where do they typically go? Wabash actually, their ordinance is very, very stringent. Um, they actually created a historic preservation committee. And that historic preservation committee is I'm not sure exactly of the exact steps as far as does it go to the building commission first and then the historic preservation commission. But either way, the historic preservation commission is the one that actually reviews all the site plans. They look at all the colors. They look at the windows, you know, the cornices. They look at you know the historic period, and they say yay or nay. And the appeal actually goes back to that commission. Yeah. And then I'm sure after that, if it's still denied, there's still a, you know, a yeah. legal appellate process, but, and their code is very, very stringent, and it all goes to a historic preservation Yeah, commission. and I, I'm just thinking out loud, you know, because they have a committee, and I'm sure that committee invests a lot of time into studying it, you know, you know what's historical, you know what's not, you know, I, I, just, I guess I'm just wondering out loud if we're the body who should be making that decision. Because, you know, I don't even get to pick out the paint color of our bathroom at our house. So, you know, <laughs> are we that group? You know, or, you know, because we don't make any other building decisions. We have a BZA, you know. And I think from Wabash's perspective, from what I understood, Amy wrote full County Chamber of Commerce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll get the process. Um, so, from what I understood, and I asked the gentleman the question today, because Casey, she put together a very eloquently spoken email about that commission. But from what I understood, is he stated that the appeal went to the uh, planning commission. And then the planning commission then sent it to the city council and then i believe from that they moved it to the historic preservation commission so it had a process it started with going through the planning organization he had to deal with all those um, and then if he could not 
give the permit or whatever it was that they were asking for, then they would go to the city council. And if the city council felt it was over their head or that they didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole, then it moved to, you know, like because they couldn't pick their own colors. And, yeah, yeah. You know, if they felt like they didn't understand what the questions that were being asked, they had this other separate group that was able to speak into that. That's from what I understand speaking to the gentleman today in Wabash. Yeah. And, you know, I think that you. I can see the other side of it, the city council being a good spot because it does represent the entire city. And the people on the council are elected by the citizens, whereas a BZA is appointed. You know, I, 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 I do like that idea. I'm just, like I said, I was thinking out loud, you know, making this the best process we can if this is enacted. Because you um, don't want to be too, too contemporary. That's what I've heard from some yeah. building owners and you know, I get that. That's where I'm hesitant because I understand, you know, I if the Rochester Downtown Partnership, the Chamber of Commerce, Fedco, all these organizations that are partnering together are trying to bring business. But if there's something that's prohibited, making it prohibitory yeah. to move forward with that or the process is too uh, cumbersome, we don't want that either because then there's that, you know, issue with they may not say that to us, but they're going to say to each other and they're going to tell their business owners not to come to Rochester, Indiana. That's what we don't want, but there's, I, I believe there has to be a process because there's got to be some structure. Yeah. Well, you know, I, and I know we're not downtown Charleston, South Carolina. We're not... Hilton Head. Hilton Head. We're not yeah. New Orleans. You know, we don't want to be that restricted. But I do think we should try to preserve this, the building's integrity, the stu structural integrity of the building. And, you know, like Brian and the mayor said, you know, it's a process and it's a first step in a process. And by no means are, do we think the seven of us have the greatest idea ever to do it. This is a living, breathing ordinance. Once, it, once it's passed, it can be amended. It can be changed depending on, you know, the outcry from, from the businesses or from how we see it actually in action. You know, it, it's not carved in a tablet and put away in a back room. You know, it is something that can be amended and can be changed. But I do believe we need something as, as a starting point, as you said. Sarah, I'll let you I, make a comment. I just had a comment on that. It is, I think that one of the important things that as our board has, has really understood the importance of, especially in the last year, is that we're a partnership. Um, none of us can do this on our own. And as a partnership, we work closely with FEDCO, with the Redevelopment Commission, with City Council, with county officials, with a lot of different groups to make everybody as successful as possible. It's never our intention to make someone unable to move forward. Um, and you know, when you're talking about businesses, if, if we're really working with some places that are, are really taking that hard-earned money that they don't have, <laughs> as a business owner and putting it into a building and investing in it, we want to give them some sense of security that Joe Schmo's not going to come in next to them and grab the barn siding that fell off of his barn and throw it up on the building next to him just to cobble some, you know, to, and, and be this eyesore that's now discouraging people from going into this business we worked so hard to establish. And so when it comes to those design guidelines and those, those businesses that are coming in and trying to create these beautiful buildings and, and giving them some security, I think there's benefit in, in partnering and, and there's nothing wrong with seeking out, okay, downtown partnership, what are your design guidelines for your facade grant program? What are the guidelines that they have to follow to be able to re receive that grant money? And how can we come alongside with you and work to be a team making the most good? So while yes, you may be the governing body that's giving the, the yay or nay stamp, that's not to say there aren't resources available that are going to help guide those decisions based on the money FEDCO has, the money Redevelopment Commission may have, the money the downtown partnership may have for these businesses coming in to offer them funding to help with that, those revitalizing efforts. And one step farther, I, I would like to challenge the Redevelopment Committee and the downtown partnership folks. And, whoever is involved in any of these things to reach out to the building owners mm -hmm. and in, try to get them involved in your specific groups. I've been amazed at how many groups we have and we don't have anybody involved with them who has skin in the game. Very few business owners are part of these groups. We need to reach out 
and to make sure we, we, we do have a true partnership, people that are invested. <laughs> Remember this lady. Yes, yes. I do apologize. I'll do the best I can to speak. Um, on what Sarah said, one of the things too, we have a downtown plant that we spent $40,000 in a grant. Well, it was a matching grant, but we spent money to have this downtown plant created, which, like Mason said, <coughs> pardon me. You don't need to cry. Drop <laughs> You're getting emotional. <laughs> but we used <laughs> that room, and this room was full. Mm -hmm. Everybody supported it. That plan involves this, aesthetics, the brick. We are talking colors other than rough. Um, and we are, I'm trying to Basically what Shauna is trying to say. Is <laughs> <laughs> that the downtown, in the downtown plan, it actually specifically took the building downtown and it gave you pictorial references as far as this building could look like this. It could look like this. Yes. Um, I told and, you were going to have to be my yeah. <laughs> And with that downtown plan, it came to the city council. The city council was asked to support it. The city council did overwhelmingly. The, the rooms were absolutely packed. Yeah. Um, but it, just like this ordinance where the council members keep talking about the fact it's a living, breathing ordinance, just like any city ordinance, this plan is also a living, breathing plan. I mean, it is written, but there were certain components that I didn't particularly care for or agree with. There were some that shot it didn't. There were some I'm sure that a few of the council members didn't and that all of you who looked at it didn't. But that doesn't negate the idea and the concepts behind the entire plan. The plan itself is a very solid structure, just like this type of ordinance is a very solid structure. But it can actually live and grow with the community, which I know with the conversation before as far as what board should be the appellate board, one of the things that came out was exactly what you said, Mark, which is, you know, the city council is, you know, they live and breathe and grow with the community because they are elected officials. So um, as far as knowing if your downtown has changed, if you start having a young and hip crowd and you start being, you know, um, I'm from Michigan, so I can't even state of a uh, hip thing in the town, sorry. Uh, like for now, sorry, anybody from Michigan would know what that is. But um, if the downtown starts to live and grow and change that way, then this body can also change their references as far as how, you know, they want to deal with the appellate um, procedure and with the ordinance and change it and make sure that it can grow with the community as the community grows. But it's just a stabilizing structure. Great. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. She can speak well for me. Well, the other thing I have is um, two, ways to, no. <laughs> two ways to view. We talk about restriction, but the other way to look at it is from economic growth. Some people who are looking at economics look at this type of ordinance as they got teeth in the game. Mm -hmm. the, the city. The community cares about what my building looks like. <clears throat> so there's two ways to look at that from that perspective. And the other thing is the $250 barrier that you brought up, that's actually not new. That's yeah. existing. <laughs> yeah, actually, and I was going to state that too. The the last two subsections about the demolition and the fines, that's existing. That's in there. Uh, that's part of the existing code. And, you know, you're absolutely right. A lot of the companies that do come into Rochester, they want to know what are the attributes that the city has. You know, where are the parks? Where are, you know, do you have bike trails? You know, what kind of businesses do you have here? I couldn't tell you how many times I have commercial entities call me and say, what other businesses do you have here? What do you have in your downtown? What can my employees do? How are the schools? I mean, it is, it's more than just what kind of ordinances are on the book. And I'm not saying that that's not a factor. You're absolutely correct. I mean, if you had something that said, everything will be blue, everything will be this structure, everything will be this material, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I do believe that, totally. But I also know, like what Sean is saying, the flip side of how many businesses will call me and say, they don't want to know about the business they're looking to buy. They want to know about what's around them. They want to know What's happened in the last, I've had somebody ask me, what happened in the last five years in that block? 
Uh, she's OB. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I've had people ask me how many permits were issued on this block or in this area. They want to know how fast it's grown. Um, how many businesses have come into the entire city? So all of these things are factors. Um, so yeah. I would agree. Yeah. I, I have heard that. Well, and, yeah. and Mr. Baldwin, you, you come from Logansport. You know, I worked down there for nine years, and they have some pretty restrictive. That well, the color of the flowers you can have outside. You know, in some areas. I mean, that's not really where we want to go. Yeah. You know, uh, at least that's not. I guess my intent. I guess I can't. I can't speak for everybody else, but. I know what well, no. <laughs> <laughs> like Johnson, we wouldn't restrict the building. We have Tyler, and your building at the top. You guys did some college Yeah, yeah. at the top of that building at one point, maybe before you bought it. As, yeah, as before. Um, and um, the top of the Tyler Center is right there. The top of um, it's 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 right. Right. And so we do it's have colors no where you right can. Now, we are not restricting that. That's not to do the work he's doing right now. So it's an ongoing project. Well, he's been proven to have others. I just keep thinking about this. If he has a permit, other this people have done this and it's been successful. This is right. fact. You know, that's the, and I think, you know, we talked to the Office of Community and Rural Affairs, and Ruth, I can't speak for, she's gone now. She had to speak. Oh, did she? Okay. I can't speak for the historical granting organizations, but I can speak for, you know, some of the other granting, and uh, we went for a grant and didn't receive it, but part of that is because what they're looking for is they're looking for folks who are going to make hard decisions every town that's been successful has actually made some hard decisions and it's been hard decisions that have been a bit controversial and what i appreciate about these gentlemen right here is that it's not i i wasn't sure what i was going to walk into today um, but what i've been very appreciative of is it's a conversation and i think that's what they're looking for and when i spoke with jennifer um, from open we've all spoke with her is are we going to have a GPS coordinates is there going to be a governing body that says we have a plan and now we're going to put teeth in the plan so we know not that it's going to be a perfect walk like we said before there's going to be some bumps in the road and some hard conversations but at least we're doing something to move in a direction that's actually intentional it's about intentionality it's about having the plan I see I've seen since I've been here for six months I've seen so many plans sitting on people's desks I've been ready to move forward with them. I don't want anybody to suffer, but I do think that somebody, and I don't have the authority to be that intentional person. Can I speak about it? Can I hope for it? Can I be a part of it with the organizations that I run? Yes, but I think somebody's got to be intentional, but it's a partnership, like Sarah said, a conversation, and that's what I've appreciated for it. And every person that's been sitting here, so everybody's been so respectful, and even the audience, to have a conversation collectively as to what intentionality are we going to move so we don't keep missing out on what other communities are moving forward. Everyone else is moving forward. Rochester keeps going around in circles. We have to have an intentional GPS coordinates and it has to be a conversation. That's basically what I see. Okay. Uh, there's no other. If, One more. I, I, One more. I, I, a, just another perspective to throw out there. If I take off that RDP hat. Um, as a former business but not building owner, this would give me more confidence as a potential business owner renting space from someone. I had a building that every time we got a hard rain, I had a bucket in my kitchen because my roof was leaking and there was nothing that my building owner was willing to do. I was fortunate to be in his building that the sides of it weren't falling apart and the facade wasn't falling apart, but there was nothing to kind of make that happen to to protect me as a business owner to present a, a business that looks professional and encourages people to come into so as a potential business owner that is leasing space this type of ordinance would give me more confidence to rent from someone knowing that there's something in place to hold them to a standard of of repair with the building okay any other thoughts comments Okay, then uh, I would uh, ask uh, comments from the council, a motion of some nature. I guess just in, in my comments, you know, I, I've been a proponent of this for quite some time, you know, having some standard. The last thing I want to do as, as an elected official is to not have something in place where something can come in that 
would destroy the downtown aesthetics where we have no option at least at this point we have a plan and you know we we can at least review what's coming in to, to protect the downtown today tomorrow and 20 years down the road um, but you know that's just my opinion I would agree with Mark the only other thing I would add is to kind of echo what Amy said I, I'd, I'd really appreciate the fact that so many people came to take the time tonight to come and talk to us and, and to voice your opinion and do it so well and, and respectively. Um, that's, that's, that's very nice. And uh, we don't always get people at a council meeting, so it, it's nice to, to have the input. To seriously, well, I mean, good or bad, um, we need to know people's opinions uh, as we move forward through things. So I just want to thank everybody for coming. Well said. Any other uh, comments to be made, council members? Well, we do need a third reading of the. Uh, <coughs> I need a need a motion. I don't know. I make a motion uh, that we suspend the rules and have the third reading of ordinance number three twenty sixteen by title only. A second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, read the motion by title or the uh, ordinance by title only. Uh, those in favor. So moved. Okay. Ordinance number 03-2016, an ordinance amending portions of the building code concerning workmanship. I would entertain a motion in reference to uh, 03-2016. I'll move to approve uh, ordinance number 03-2016. Do we have a second? No second. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Those opposed? I'm again, Ted, I'm going to abstain due to the fact that I have a building in that corridor and I don't want any thoughts of my voting. You're abstaining. I'm abstaining from the vote. Okay. It's six four and one abstention. Okay. I would make this note uh, I mentioned a while ago about building owners being involved right. in some of these committees and such the, my opinion this is a good review group right here we have two building owners sitting right here with this group I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn I'll second it we were in adjournment thank you all